Hello there, this is Daniele Frantushev, so in this video we're going to have a look at how you can create a crowd simulation with Atoms inside Unreal. So before you can do, you can create your agents and simulate them, you need to have some assets. So you have a few options here, you can create them manually or you can import the Atoms JSON that you have uh, uh, inside your data folder of your Atoms Unreal installation or even uh, import the JSON from the Atoms agents bundle from our, that you can download from our website. In this particular video, I'm using the uh, demo project that is uh, on our website, so you can download that and, and use and start from that. Uh, so uh, you will find some uh, assets uh, that are prepared for uh, uh, for to be used with atoms. So we have the agent type for the man, uh, which is like uh, uh, contains a skin asset, a skeleton asset. So this will be a skeletal mesh and a skeleton asset. Uh, and then we have the state machine and the, and the character is the character asset. The character asset is used by Atoms for retargeting in real time. Uh, then also you can have also other options for physics and, and uh, sorry for ragdolls and collisions. Uh, I won't go into details here how you can set up your agent types because uh, there are other videos explaining that. Uh, here also we have animation clips and again there are videos that are explaining how to set up animation clips in state machines as well as variations. So. We won't go in detail um, uh, through all these things now, uh, but basically um, to set up your uh, simulation, you can uh, just go in the place actor tab and then uh, search for group and then you can drag and drop an Atoms agent group inside the viewport. Uh, I'm going to change the location to 000, although that is not necessary. I'm just going to bring it up a little. Um, and then basically from here, now you have, you have finally an agent group and you can start creating your simulation. Although you you know you notice already that there are no agents here to simulate, so uh, to do the, to add new agents, you can click on the Add Component button when having the agent group actor selected. And if you scroll down, you'll find the Atoms Behavior section, uh, where basically all the behaviors uh, behavior components uh, available are listed, and you can attach them to your agent group. Uh, so these are the default uh, behavior uh, that are uh, shipped with Atoms, but you can create your own with C++ or, or a Blueprint if you want. Uh, so to start with, uh, we can uh, uh, you know, create a layout module. So the layout module is what, uh, a layout module is what create agents. So we can create, for instance, a grid, a grid of agents. Uh, I'm gonna set an agent type, so I'm gonna use the man and set the size to four by four, something like this. Uh, let's just change the direction to minus one. Uh, and now basically we have our agents. If I press play, you'll see that the agents are uh, basically just not moving at all. And this is because we haven't applied any animation. So for adding an animation, you will usually use a state machine or a clip reader. As soon as I attach the state machine um, behavior, you see that my agents are now uh, playing an animation. So this is just the idle animation, they're just there standing. Um, and basically this is how you can also attach uh, animation on your uh, uh, agents. Uh, other layouts that you can use are uh, mesh cutter. So for instance, let's, um, let me create a plane. Uh, let's do a plane like this. I'm put it here and I'm gonna make it a bit bigger, something like this. Just bring it up a little. Okay, so let's make it 20 by 20. 20 something like this and then uh, let's go to the agent group so i'm going to select my agent group i'm going to delete the grid layout I'm going to say mesh scatter layout mesh scatter layout behavior i can select again the agent type and then i can say the mesh is the plane i think yeah so here we have our agents and they are uh, basically if you see they are uh, intersecting the plane just because the root of our skeleton is being placed on the plane uh, if the root, for instance, is between the feet, you would see them uh, below the ground. Um, but also if we apply an eye field here, uh, so for instance, if we do Atom's ground, you'll see the agents are actually uh, on, top of the, on top of the plane. So eye fields are the way you can do terrain ad adaptation. And again, there are other videos explaining how to do this. But briefly, it's just you create a, a trace channel, uh, a collision channel in your uh, uh, project. So if I go in the project and I go under collision here, you see here we have a trace channel that is called Atoms Ground, which is the one that uh, I've enabled on the state machine. And of course you have to make sure that uh, your mesh uh, has that uh, um, you know, collision channel set up so the, the terrain adaptation can work. 
Okay, so anyway, we have other layouts. So we have uh, uh, the curve layout, uh, we have the curve pair layout, uh, we have the points layout, which you can use in conjunction with the layout tool if you want, which is like the layout tool lets you place agents uh, um, in an artistic way. So you can just click on a terrain and then it will actually place the agents. Um, otherwise, what you can do is you can also create them with Blueprint or with C++ uh, on the fly. Okay. So let me delete this uh, and then I can create again the grid layout. I'm also going to, um, um, let's do again four by four minus one. Okay, uh, sorry, let's keep one. Okay, so let me delete the plane and actually let, let's keep it for now. Let's just make it a bit bigger. Uh, so it can be maybe 50, 50, okay, something like this. I don't care about that. Okay, cool. So for instance, if we go on the agent group and we change the state, which is what's what drives the uh, the the state, basically what's drive the state on the state machine. So this will be, if you set it to one, it will be a walk state. We see the, our agents are just walking on a straight line. So then basically at this point is what you could add like another module, which is, um, uh, you know, what we call a directional module. So if you use, for instance, a follow curve, first let me create a spline atom spline actor so i'm gonna put it here i'm gonna select this vertex and then i'm gonna halt and click and drag to make a new one uh, something like this uh, and then i can go on the agent group got i can attach a follow curve behavior uh, and then if i press play my agents will follow the curve you see that they're, now they're turning so the directional modules are modules that uh, um, edit the direction of your agents uh, what they do is really driving a metadata on the agents and uh, uh, the, uh, by changing this metadata, uh, these modules are actually changing the direction of the agent. Uh, we have a lot of modules for uh, uh, changing the direction of the agents. Like for instance, you have the follow target, we have the navigation mesh uh, and others. Uh, you can also change the direction by with, your, with Blueprint or with your own C++ behavior module if you want. But this is basically how you can drive the simulation. So you would use a directional module for uh, changing the, uh, the direction of, of your agents. Another thing is that if you go inside the, each one of the, uh, I mean, if you go here in the uh, um, detail panel and you see, uh, you select one of these uh, um, behavior modules, you'll see that some uh, um, properties, they have this state override name, so ending with override, and we are, they have basically this button and also this add override button. So if, for instance, if I click on this button here, uh, whenever, basically, whenever you find a, an, an, um, a property with ending with override, it means that uh, this property can be changed per agent. So, for instance, if I select uh, these four agents here, so let me again select these four, I can set a different state for just those agents. So, for instance, if I set zero, they will be just uh, uh, standing there. Uh, if I select the last four, like there, uh, I can actually say, oh no, I want you to jog. Uh, so if now I press play, see that we have those agents jogging, these others are just standing there and the others are still working. So this is a, a quick way in which you can modify your simulation by uh, just changing uh, um, the overrides for each, uh, um, for, uh, you know, th these properties. And a lot of uh, uh, the parameters that you will find here uh, are overridable. So even the follow curve, for instance, if I, I can change the curve weight for uh, uh, those agents to zero, and if I press play, those agents will just go on a straight line because they're completely ignoring the, the follow curve module now. So let me just clear that. Uh, okay, so basically this is how you can uh, um, use overrides. We have a specific video for the override dialogue. Um, so this UI, um, this is called the override dialogue. Uh, so we have a specific video for that uh, if you want to check it out. Um, and now let's we can have a look at the uh, agent group itself. So the Atoms metadata, uh, this section here is covered again in another video. So I would encourage you to check that. So just um, search for Atoms and Real metadata. This video should pop up. Uh, but then we have this uh, agent group section here. So as you might have noticed, uh, we, ha we have added uh, the modules in a certain order, right? So if you... Um, uh, the order in which you uh, apply your behavior modules is very important. 
Um, and also you might have noticed that Unreal didn't preserve the order in which we um, uh, created our components. So if I, like at the moment where I selected or press play and then I went back to the agent group, the follow curve is uh, uh, basically displayed at the second position instead of the third. So you see these two swapped. This is because Unreal doesn't keep the order of the component, but we're gonna show you the, the order is, is down here. So the first module that was created was the state machine. And then we created the grid behavior, grid layout behavior. This is because you remember before we removed the grid layout and created mesh scatter, and then we created again grid layout. Um, it good, it's good practice to keep it at the first one, the layout module, but anyway, it doesn't really matter in this case. Then we have the state machine, uh, and then we have the follow curve. So if you check each one of the modules, they will have this behavior order index. Uh, so you see the follow curve is two, and then the state machine is uh, one. Uh, and so, and this is basically what you see here in this uh, behavior modules list. So uh, this is important because as soon as you start adding, for instance, multiple directional modules, like for instance, you could have like a follow target or uh, an mesh and uh, or an avoidance. It's imp the order in which they are, they, um, the work is very important. So you should make sure that they are uh, uh, in the right order because if the a follow curve comes in action before uh, a navigation mesh, then the result will actually change. So the, the order is pretty important. Uh, then down here, uh, we have this enable simulation. So if you turn it off, it will just disable the simulation. You can say if you want to simulate only visible agents, uh, and then you will uh, have to provide the, uh, the simulation distance and the simulation fading fade distance. So uh, the, the, you would have a smooth transition. Uh, the use static bounding box is used uh, um, mainly when you have uh, agents that are uh, always in the same place. For instance, they are just standing there or talking. They are in a crowd, uh, in a stadium. Uh, this is because uh, if you don't compute the bounding box at every at every tick, the performance is much quicker. Uh, the behavior order is what you see here. So I mean, anyway, it's here as well, but I would, just, I would encourage you to, to just play with this one and not uh, touch this one here. The parentaging group, uh, this basically is used by the sync module, or even if you want just to make sure that the simulation happens in a certain order. So if you uh, attach a parent group to this module, uh, the parent agent group is gonna be evaluated before this module. So that's necessary for the sync module because the sync module is what you could use for, uh, you know, attaching a prop to, a, um, to, a, to an agent. Uh, so for instance, a, a weapon. Uh, and so the parent agent group for the weapon agent group will be um, the, 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 the main character agent group. So if you, for instance, if you were to attach like a, a gun to the, to the man, uh, that would go in a separate agent group, and this agent group, agent group will be our uh, parent agent group. Here also you can select the uh, view mode, so we have variation skin and none. So of course none doesn't display anything, skin will display the skin mesh, which is what we have here. Uh, if you have var if you, even if you have variations enabled then you don't have any variation applied, then we use the, uh, the skin display. So I would recommend, again, we have videos for the variations just uh, check it there. Uh, you can apply also variations here, the variation assets. So for instance, here we have the, the variation assets, this one, we just drag and drop it there. Uh, you can provide the frame rate, uh, um, basically that is used by Atom for uh, evaluating the, the simulation. Uh, then you, you can use the static frame. This stuff is used by the sequencer, if you want to use the sequencer. So as soon as you enable it, you have a reset frame for the simulation and the static frame uh, that is basically the frame that is used by Atoms by um, you know playing uh, the simulation within the sequencer. If I press play and you have that uh, active, you see that the agents are stuck, uh, and this is because that is expecting the static frame to change. But if it's not changing, it won't just basically simulate. So anyway, now it's working again because the static frame, the use static frame option is off. Another thing that you can do to optimize your simulation is to enable tick interval. This will, uh, basically Atoms will use this tick interval for uh, simulating your agents. Uh, here we have the selection of the agents. So this is actually the, the ideas of the selected agents. So if you want to just clear the selection, just, uh, you can just empty this, uh, this list here. Enable neighbors query, it's uh, an option for enabling the fast query of the neighbor agents. For instance, metadata is used for passing metadata to the, to the material. We have an, a video for that as well, so I would encourage you to check that. Uh, and also we have uh, uh, some more options here for updating the princess metadata at every tick uh, and forcing the compute pod and so on. Also here we have the uh, Eros, uh, Eros um, section that is for the Eros promotion. Again, this is covered by another video and I would encourage you to check that. Uh, finally, we have this uh, refresh agent group. 
uh, which basically will uh, uh, refresh the agent group. So if, for instance, if you change uh, your ground and your uh, simulation doesn't update in the editor, you can just press this button and that would actually update the, the, the agent group for you. Or even if you change anything in, in the scene which is not related to the agent group, uh, I mean, like it's not like a component or a, or a parameter on the agent group, uh, but you know that that um, object actor or whatever it actually um, has uh, um, uh, is affecting the simulation, you should press the refresh agent group button in the view uh, in here to actually see the simulation being updated in the viewport. Okay, uh, so this is all for this video. Thanks for watching.